Hey, hey we're, we're Native, Native Tongue. Tongue. And make sure to stick around to catch our exclusive interview with Beyond the Band. You're watching Beyond the Band. Joining me today is Native Tongue. So they formed from I Capture Castle, which some of you might know. Tell me about how you guys went from I Capture Castle to Native Tongue. So we all were in I Capture Castle uh, right at the end of I Capture Castle's life, and we were just about to head back into studio to record some more music. And the lead singer, or the lead screamer, uh, Marcus, decided that music just wasn't going to be a part of his life anymore. He needed to move on. So by the time that we got into studio, all of us um, felt that it was time to change directions and record a new style of music and leave the hardcore uh, music behind and Native Tongue kind of just naturally formed from that. So I feel with Marcus leaving, like to me that's almost a, you guys changing your sound is almost like a thank you to him and hey we appreciate what he did but we're also like going to go our own way because you're not here and we don't want to continue what we're doing without you. To me that's almost like a, like a thank you in a way. Almost yeah. like a nice, respectful way to like create a new project, but kind of stay true to who you guys were as a band. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, in an instance, for at least in my mind, kind of I Capture Castle was like Marcus in that sense. So you kind of, without Marcus, it didn't really seem the same. Try to replicate Yeah, it. so yeah, it was, yeah. So, and, and by the four of us, we kind of had a different dynamic, and we all had moved past, like you said, the hardcore kind of music we all we're vibing in a more different direction, so it just naturally progressed into kind of the sound, the rock, more progressive um, sound, so. And was that kind of an easier transition for you guys, or was there like one of you who was like, mm, I'm not, I don't know about this, like, I want the hardcore screams, we need to be like deathcore hardcore. At the beginning, uh, at the beginning yeah, we, we kinda, were all yeah. apprehensive about it, you know, this was our baby, we were with it for years. Yeah, the you know, way that it actually happened, happened was interesting though, um, because, uh, when we, when we first got into the studio, the first day that we were going to record, um, we weren't sure if we were going to keep recording stuff as I Capture Castle or if we were going to do it under a different band name, and we are still debating it. Um, and I got sick. And so, uh, so for two days of the studio time, I stayed home. And then by the time I got back, uh, there was a song that was already somewhat recorded that was going to be an I Capture Castle song. Um, and that song actually ended up being Feast and Famine, even though it sounds completely different <laughs> yeah. than what it sounded like as an I Capture Castle song. Um, but these guys and our producers worked really hard to put that song together, um, and th when the time I got back, uh, our producer Bucket just looked me in the eyes and he's like, you're a rock singer now, write the song. <laughs> and then Native Tongue just kind of came from that. Uh, I guess they showed him some of uh, my earlier stuff because before I played with this band I was a solo artist and um, just listening to my voice um, Bucket really felt that that's the direction I needed to go um, and I had never sang in a rock band and I, I don't know about you guys if you had ever played in a rock band but it's surprising how natural it feels for all of us to do this um, mm -hmm. you know I, I wouldn't have thought that this was the type of band that would uh, that would gel right for us, but it feels, it's just a bit of a blow. Calls me googly eyes. You know you're beautiful, right? You know that? Even you are beautiful. I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. We put it out there just took off. Three million people have shared this post. <laughs> Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. My <laughs> whole family's wearing glasses. I wear glasses and I'm proud. I even have the army on my team. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. Thanks. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. 
I got pregnant and I was the main one working, so I did what I had to do to survive. Sentía que la escuela no era para mí. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. Sentí como que si quiero cambiar el mundo, tengo que cambiar a mí primero. I could not have gotten my diploma without my family. Mi consejera, ella fue lo máximo para mí porque me ayudó mucho con todo. I've been given an opportunity and I'm just thankful for it. Yeah, it's hard, but keep on going and keep on trying. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. So when you're talking about you had your Feast and Famine song that was going to be for I Capture Castle, and then you kind of switched it, was it more hardcore sounding then, and then you switched it over? Oh yeah, yeah it definitely was. I had all kinds of different breakdowns and the more riffy type stuff in there that we had done previously, and it just was kind of seemed forced at that moment because we didn't really kind of got to a point where it's like, all right, I can go to a gun range and like write 50 breakdowns. This isn't interesting to us anymore. And at least for us, I mean, we all listen to softer rock, different, all kinds of different things that weren't really kind of grown out of that hardcore, you know, kind of age. So it just, that natural progression was just so on force and so natural that it just happened, like you said, like the fit of a glove. So just... Mm -hmm. Would you say it helped you guys grow as a band then at all, learning a new kind of music it style? It definitely did, yeah, as well. Uh -huh especially writing in the writing process as well, so. How so in the writing process? Well, I mean, before, you know, you go in, you're like, okay, you got your bridge, your verse, your chorus, they all have to be a certain way, you have to have, you know, clean vocals on the chorus, you have to have the screaming in the verses, when you come to the bridge, you pretty much have to have a breakdown. So, and then to kind of play around with those different, like, aspects and, and switch those things. What does it sound if we start with the chorus? What does it start with, you know, just, like, playing around and growing as a musician and writing is, like, we're much, I think we're much better than we were then, so. And the main thing about, uh, you know, metal and hardcore music as much as I still love it and it's near and dear to me, um, is that in a metal band or in a hardcore band, you're, you're working with, very specific limitations, you know, and um, moving over to, you know, uh, Native Tongue, I'm sure as you've heard the album, we didn't hold anything back. If we wanted to write something, we did it. You know, we, there's tracks on there that sound like Michael Jackson, there's tracks on there that sound like Breaking Benjamin, there's ukulele tracks, of, there's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's ukulele and slide guitar. Nothing was off limits. Yeah, and, and though though there are bands in metal who successfully experiment and add those type of aspects and do it really well, it's much harder to come by. And it feels very natural um, for us, at least in this genre, to kind of experiment and do what we want um, while still retaining our sound. Mm -hmm. We still sound like native tongue. And that's the important thing, is that we wouldn't have sounded like I Catcher Castle if we started experimenting and doing those kind of things. Um, but with this change, it's opened our doors. We have a lot more freedom to do whatever we want when it comes to the next album and still retain our sound, still, uh, you know, please our fans and still be true to ourselves. One thing that I've noticed from just what you have said to me is it sounds like this transition has almost fueled the fire for you guys. It was like, you're doing so good. You open for so many big name bands and you're almost to a point of, do we keep going, do we stop? And then it was like, let's change it up. And I feel like, just from what you've said, it kind of propelled you guys to keep going and push. If we would have stuck yeah. around with Castle, who knows if we would still be playing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even be a band anymore. Yeah, kind of like two steps forward, one step, you know. <laughs> no, so. we, we definitely refueled our Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it.
We'd do anything for kids. Yet one in six children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. <laughs> I'm a retired school psychologist, and helping people was my thing. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell, and I had to have Meals on Wheels. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. Meals on Wheels, coming to my door as someone who's housebound, having someone check on me, assures me that I'm not forgotten. Meals on Wheels has given me a mode of freedom that I wouldn't have otherwise. We are the clients. We are the clients. We are the clients of Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. So how did you guys come up with your name then for Native Tongue? Where did that derive from? That was in the studio, <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah, the first song, we just kind of sat and brainstormed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just kind of collaborating of what what would we want to have that kind of represents the new sound that we're going towards and kind of the, the views and things that we were taking. Um, with Cody writing all the lyrics um, kind of based around a central theme as well, it just made sense when we, came, when we finally arrived to that name. I mean, we, we went through a lot of them. Uh, Donnie had like a whole list of phone, <laughs> other choices and possible, yeah, things. like all kinds yeah. of different yeah. things, so. That's cool. And Cody, you said you, Bucket had told you to do rock be a rock star, a rock artist. Is that uh, weird for you? Rock singer. Yeah, rock singer. <laughs> yeah, um, very, very weird. Um, I didn't know that I could. Uh, when I uh, joined I Capture Castle, um, their last record was already recorded. So um, I, I actually wasn't on that record, even though I was the singer who sang all of that music live. And when they found me, I was a folk singer. I had toured for uh, roughly four years, you know, selling just my own folk music. And uh, then I joined I Capture Castle, and I was just trying to sing uh, what was put in front of me. But when I was told, like, you have a rock voice and you can sing rock music, like, you, you can do this, I didn't believe them for a minute it was it was Not kind of a great a experience for all of us as well because until that point we hadn't really heard anything done together where we heard cody's voice because like you said before we were always he was got to in, imitate tyler carter or time you know just do all the kinds of different people he didn't we didn't hear cody's voice or how cody wanted to sound so when we actually got to hear him like hurry and like here here's some lyrics he just sat down and it, it was it was quick it was maybe 30 minutes and he had all the lyrics down got up and laid it down within another 30 minutes and it was it was like a big like wow this is this is what we're doing this is where we're going forward it was yeah, great that was a really interesting experience because I've, I've never been able to write songs the way that i do with these guys i i haven't um when we sat down in studio to do feast and famine it took me 15 minutes to write the lyrics for the entire song um and every song after that gelled just about the same way it, I would sit down maybe 15 or 20 minutes and it would just be done because there was just something so driven about the way that we put it together. And it was the first time that at least that I, going into an album, had, um, had a very clear picture in my mind of the general idea um, or the general uh, topics that I wanted to portray when the album was all finished. And I think having that sort of goal streamlined and being able to write with these guys, you know, really brought out the best of me. See, I think that's crazy. You say folk singer, you know, to hardcore, and then it's probably nice, though, to finally find your own voice and be able to... Yeah, definitely. It's interesting. But I can't believe you did writing of lyrics in, like, 15, 20 minutes. That's impressive. I, it's kind I of just his so. thing. He was just, just waiting. Just, he was just, ready. You just gave him a chance. It just has like this, this weird talent of what we, you know, we get the song good, or we get everything feeling right, and I, I don't know if it's just that we've done such a good job mm -hmm. that he gets to the point where he's, he's been listening the whole time. He's like, okay, this is what I want to say. This is what you know, and just ends up fitting perfectly every time, and like, just flawlessly every time, just being, um, away, you know, blown away about that, and and the fact that. 
like even our producers is always like, dude, that's sick. Like every time, like anything, it's like, like Cody will have to take his time, kind of like go off and like don't don't talk to me, don't mess with me, let me just kind of do this. And then after it's just like, dude, that's sick. Yeah. So that's guys, what he always right, says. You guys write your stuff first, and then he comes in with the lyrics. And yeah, usually, I mean, there's been mm-hmm. cases where it's like, okay, I'm not sure what kind of like vibe we should take this. And Cody, since he was a Volk singer, you know, like oh, let's do these kind of chords. These are darker chords. This is what you could play with, and we kind of just collaborate on that end, but. Yeah, the with the four of us getting together and and writing the music first before I actually put down the lyrics, I think is what's made it so easy. If the music wasn't so good that these guys were writing before I actually got to the studio, it'd be a lot harder for me to put lyrics to it. And one thing that I read online on your website was mm-hmm. every song off that album is through the eyes of somebody else. Mm-hmm. So is that how come it's so easy to you? Is your like? Um, I don't know. Uh, I I don't know if that's what made it simple. Um, if if it is, it has less to do with the concept and more to do with the purpose, I guess. Like having that singular purpose and knowing that that album wasn't written for us and it wasn't written for people, it was written about people. You know, um, every song on that album, um, other than one, was, uh, was a song that I wrote from other people's perspectives, not necessarily uh, something that happened to me and not necessarily my own opinions, but um, but either uh, things going on in the world in general or just an attempt on my part to understand uh, what's going on in people's heads and what's going on in their hearts, and that's why the songs came out the way they did. The that's way awesome. that they did. Sweetheart, think about your future. Jeff over there did, and just look at him. He saved up, bought a house, he's got a beautiful wife, they even had a fancy pants destination wedding, and oh, oh, they had a baby! Ah! Smart and handsome, ooh, la la. Ah. Now I've been saving these frames for pictures of my future grandbabies for years, and the shopping sprees on organic clothing and eye telephone cases is not helping you save for a family. Oh gracious! Look at that! He's a model! <gasps> I bet you he's putting all that money right into a 401k or his baby's college fund. And his teeth are so straight. See how good saving can look at feedthepig.org. Feed the pig. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my words. These are not my words. These are not my words. One of the um, songs you talked about was Feast and Famine. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of been one that's been brought up several times. I'm going to pitch this question to Donnie since you're kind of quiet over it. All right. (laughs) So tell me about that song and a little bit about your music video that you made with that. So that song is, uh, I, I, it was the first one that we did in the studio, so it was really experimental and it started really heavy and then we kind of took it in a different direction. So I think that there's, in, in that way, it's kind of special to all of us because it's like, it was that point of like difference, you know what I mean? This is how we make ourselves different from Eye Capture Castle. So um, as far as the video goes, it was something we just kind of wanted a basic video we didn't want to do a crazy storyline we didn't want actors and all this stuff we wanted just kind of a really basic representation of the band at that point you know what i mean just really um, yeah just clean really clean and so we just kept it as simple as possible in that regard i also kind of why since it was the first song as well kind of made sense of like all right this has got to be this has got to be the opening track of the album because this is where we started off of and it's kind of funny because the second track is actually the last song that we recorded so it's yeah but you have a couple other music videos out there, Our Hands as well. Mm-hmm. Tell me, let's pitch this one to you. Tell me mm-hmm. a little bit that, about that music video. Um, filmed in your garage, right? Yeah, it was oh, filmed really? in the garage, yeah. yeah. I would. I don't know if that one we were just trying to make it look like we were playing in a circle. I guess, I don't that's know. That's it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> camera angles and such. Yeah. Yep. So are you guys like a DIY band with your videos, or do you guys have someone come who and 
like helps do all that? Half half for the most part, yeah, yeah. We're actually DIY. Like Cody edited all that video and put mm -hmm. all of the the political, you know, protest videos and stuff over that. The circle videos that we did as well. So. Yeah, um, the majority of our videos um, are filmed and directed by Keaton and edited by me, but uh, there are a few of them, uh, videos like Feast and Famine and videos like Grief and Ties, where we've had help um, from other people. Even uh, though the storyline and all, like the consumption, yeah. like the storyline for Grief and Ties was completely Cody. Right, I, I wrote the video, but we, uh, we had the help of an extreme, extremely talented um, person named Tim Burton, not <laughs> not the actual Tim, Tim Burton. Burton. Not, yeah, not the Fancy. Tim Burton. Tim Burr uh, media. <laughs> but, yeah. But uh, Tim Burton is uh, a person who's done some really great things. He's on tour with Emma Rosa oh. at the moment. And he uh, actually used to go to school with me, and he played in a band um, a while ago uh, before uh, there was the new low or before... Um, Garrett Garfield, uh, it was who he is now, and he decided to just kind of take a different direction, and and you can see um, in the video for Grief and Ties that he knows exactly what he's doing. He's going to be a big director for music. Um, I, so my bet would be in the next five years. Um, so fortunately enough, uh, we were able to do a video with him before <laughs> it was really hard to get in contact with him. <laughs> yeah. So with Grief and Ties, um, in the beginning, I believe there's a pill bottle that you see on the ground. Is that, so is this video very tied to like, I gathered suicide or that's kind of the message I got from that first little intro part. Yeah. Is that kind of what you were trying to touch on with that video or? Well, yeah, it is what we were trying to touch on with the video. Um, the, the song itself is not necessarily about suicide, but, the, but it is very broad um, in the way that it's written. Um, and can kind of be taken in a lot of different ways uh, with the perspectives. And uh, when it came time to write the video, um, I didn't necessarily want the video to just blatantly be a depiction of what the song necessarily was about. Um, but the topic just fits so well. Um, so I'm sure that there's a lot of people who will always think that that's what Grief and Ties is about. But really, at the end of the day, I mean, all of our songs are about whatever you think that they're about. You know, if you, if you sit down and you listen to one of our songs and you find that it touches you in a certain way or you listen to one of our songs and you find that it means something specific to you, then you're right. You know, well, I think that's to to so great about music is because it is you look at it and you have a song and it can be very straightforward of what the meaning's about, mm -hmm. but someone else can listen to it and based on their experiences, it means something totally different. When you take it one step further, add the music video, you've just created a visualization to go with that song. So people automatically, oh, well, clearly, like I did, I see a pill bottle, I see someone on the bed, it's gotta be, they're just talking about suicide. But before that video, I related it to something else. And I think that's one thing about music that as it builds with different layers and concepts that it's, it's yeah. I don't know, it's a really cool piece of like art, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, that a lot of people who do see the music video um, for Grief and Ties uh, will see the intention in it because e even though it is a song uh, that brings up a lot of hard subjects and the video itself brings up suicide, which is a very hard subject to for everybody to talk about, for everybody to deal with, um, the video itself is a lot more um, about uh, impact and how the consequences of your actions can have indirect um, effects that you would never think of in the first place. Um, for those of you who haven't seen the video, spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> the, the video itself leads you to believe the entire time that, uh, that this couple who's living in this home uh, has fallen on hard times and they have a rocky relationship and that um, and that this man's girlfriend or wife or spouse, his loved one, commits suicide, but by the end of the video you find that it's not that, it's their daughter. Right. And that uh, with all of their fighting and with everything that was going on in their relationship that it had a very strong and indirect consequence that they couldn't foresee. And so 
that's kind of the idea that I was trying to portray with the video itself, and that's why uh, we used the quote that we did at the beginning that's of the video yes, to leave, cool. yeah, to leave a little bit of foreshadowing. I was hoping that um, when people viewed that music video, that um, those who really wanted to pay attention might find that poem and find that there was uh, that there was something hidden or that was something missing that they wouldn't catch until the end. Right, and I think that's great. So if you guys haven't seen the music video, I suggest go watch it, even though we kind of just spoiled it a little bit. Um, but if they want to watch your other music videos and listen to your music, where can they find you guys at? Well, nativetongueband.com is actually the best place to go for anything. You go there and you can get to anything, all of our social media, music, videos, everything. So. I was going to say, you have your track list there and then all your videos below, your covers of other songs. Yeah, and exactly. Stuff. And then if you want to go to t uh, NTV TNG, you can actually sign up for our community. And you actually get a exclusive content, all kinds of things that no one else actually gets, mm -hmm. um, you know, rights to. So. Right. Mm -hmm. And so check these guys out because they're they're awesome. Utah local band, but they're great. Toured with a lot of big bands, but their new sound is I love it because you thank combine you. rock, little hardcore, a little bit of everything, and it's I don't know, it's good ear candy. So <laughs> thank you guys for being here. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. Stay tuned to be on the band. <laughs>